How's it going? So we're here, we're still in the Blue Mountain Range, we're in the foothills and we're in what I call the sand barrens, right? So one thing that's really neat about where I live is we have so many different like micro and bio regions just within this one area. Like right now, um, I'm, I'm literally in a desert and in 25, 35 minutes, I can be in a subalpine forest. We're what we're called as high mountain deserts. So we have like really extreme winter sometimes and like really hot summers and all different types of little climates and different elevations. But I'm here today to jabber with you about Big Sage. That's her common name. Now the funny thing about me is that I suck at Latin. <laughs> I think that my body just like genetically rejects it because like the people who killed my father's culture spoke Latin fluently, right? <laughs> so, but one of the words and that I can say well is Big Sage's Latin name, and I don't know why it just sticks in my head, but she's Artemisia tridentia. Um, now, she, unlike White Sage, which has a really small growing range and is completely endangered and is really sensitive to particular habitats and is over harvested and misunderstood, um, Big Sage is abundant. She's aggressive. She takes over. She grows all the way from uh, little parts of like Northern California, but mainly through Oregon, up into Washington, over into Idaho, Montana, uh, Wyoming, down into Utah, um, Northern parts of Nevada. She is everywhere. And she really loves like what we would call like the white lands, right? Like where she's growing right now, this is alkali soil. This is sand soil. It has almost no nutrition in it, right? Like it's kind of, like it's not dead soil, but I mean, you're, you're not growing a tomato in it, right? You're not growing much and she takes over and she grows big. These are, this is actually a relatively small patch. Um, if he zooms around, he can show you, but she, she'll cover entire foothills here. And I've seen her get as tall as 10, 12 feet and she'll have like, if you look down here, she gets these huge branches. I mean, she basically turns into a tree. And again, this is a small one. Now, medicinally, she is fantastic externally for anything and everything to do with antifungal, antibacterial. If you need to heal a wound, if you um, suffer with like athlete's foot or ringworm or any, any type of um, fungal bacterial issue on your skin, she is amazing. Now I'm gonna say it, it's cold out here, it's sunny but it's actually pretty cold. Um, she can be used internally, she has been used internally like traditionally, but it's important to know that, and I'm going to this because that wind's probably making it so you can't hear me, it's important to know volatile lady meaning oh my gosh she is so strong smelling um, and in fact I like to um, harvest her in like very very early spring end of winter because she's not as potent at that point compared to like when she like really wakes up in the summertime and gets going her volatile oil levels get even higher um, because if you use her internally you can really damage um, your kidneys your liver and so but traditionally she would be used for like fevers headaches colds um, as an antiparasitic right because she's volatile enough that she's gonna kill anything in there including your own organs so you have to use her very sparingly and if you do and I'd argue um, before you just go out and pick some and use it find somebody to guide you on that because you really don't want to be injuring yourself so I pretty much use her externally but again anything fungus she will kill it in fact um i have a really strong relationship with her because back in my homeless days um i was stuck on the coast for off off and on all the time you know it's a more temperate region there um and you can't get dry when you're homeless anywhere by the ocean no matter where it's at it's really hard to dry out and it had been like a really really wet winter and my feet were just soaking constantly and um very long, sad, hard story short. Um, I had boot rot that was pretty close to um, getting into gangrene and I, I, by complete happenstance, ended up back here in Northeast Oregon. Um, I didn't even realize we were heading that way because we kind of just bounce all over the country as homeless kids, you know, we go whichever way the rig is taking you. Um, and she saved my feet. I, I was able to apply her to my feet. I was making poultices. I was also boiling her down into like a really strong tea and then like dipping my feet in it, which would seem counterproductive because um, 
my feet were already really wet, right? But the terpenes in her, as well as her, as her tannins, were really, really drying that out. And she, she saved my feet. I used pine pitch as well, but mainly I used her. Um, and she is just an amazing ally for that. Um, now, some people, I mean, you can traditionally use her as a smudge. I personally don't use sages to smudge. It wasn't part of, like, my ancestors' repertoire, really. Um, so I don't really mess around with that. But um, if you were going to use a sage and that is something that you found important to do, you know, don't use white sage. She, she's completely misunderstood. She's completely over harvested and endangered but big sage if you live in an area she is abundant now a lot of you might be thinking but i use garden sage internally right you can get a garden sage tea and a garden sage tincture and all that kind of stuff there's a car coming from far away we're in the middle of nowhere um but the thing is is that did you know that garden sage actually isn't a sage she's in the mint family so the sage you can buy at the store are the sage you hear people talk about for helping like with fevers or drying out like breast milk and things like that she's actually in the mint family she is not in the sage family um, and so it's really important to understand that real sages are a little sketchy to use internally because of how strong they are but remember just because we can't use something internally or need to be cautious with it doesn't mean that she doesn't have an abundant amount of healing to offer us on an external level um, but this is just a really good one and she grows in a lot of places a lot of places that are you know on the northern tier if you live if you live in <laughs> I hear that car slowing down and I'm like you never know who you're gonna run into out here they could be real kind and hospitable or they could be they could be aggressive but they're going fast enough they're not slowing down uh, the fucking safety inspection truck I have no idea <laughs> anyhow so this is Big Sage. She's a fantastic ally to get to know. She's aggressive. She grows like everywhere, anywhere. She pops up where the soil is really bad. Uh, a lot of farmers have to do control of her because she will take over fields that they're trying to work, you know, like, um, so it's not one that we really, uh, of course we should always like harvest like ethically, but it's not one that um, has a hard bounce back time, right? Like white sage does. So anyhow, um, I guess I should show you her up close a little bit. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> I stepped on my skirt and I don't haven't having a time of it <laughs> so just for identification purposes she looks a lot like most other big sage brushes um, but she's not like white sage white sage has really bigger leaves and she's like you know you see her and she's like way more velvety um, big sage she has these little individual lobes and if he can get really close there I don't know if he can there's always these three tips. It looks like three little toes on the end of it right there. Three little toes, right? Um, and she smells really pungent. She does not smell like white sage at all. Um, I usually like to make her into an oil infusion or like if you were battling some type of fungal infection, you could make like um, an a water infusion out of her right like a long steep tea and then take that water with a washcloth and um, put it on your um, wherever your area is affected at now when it comes to internal use if you are going to decide to use her please do it very sparingly use small amounts don't brew it for more than four to five minutes and take breaks in between and do in between doing it meaning like don't use her consecutively um, because it's it can, again can be really really hard on your liver and your kidneys because of her volatile oil so um, the most important thing that I want you to remember is that you are absolutely smart enough to do this that you can get out here and you can learn the relationships of the plants that are in your area um, and you don't need to spend thousands of dollars and take hundreds and hundreds of hours to learn about this stuff you just have to trust your own human curiosity and get out here and, and figure out what's growing around you you are definitely smart enough to do this so if you like my random videos where I trip on my skirt and fall down and stumble over words and I'm worried about the cars that are going by <laughs> make sure to um, like comment subscribe turn on notifications and share so other people can learn too if you're following me or if you're watching me on Instagram come find me on YouTube if you're watching me on YouTube come find me on Instagram I share all kinds of different things on both platforms so all right thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye